What constitutes an electric current? What are X-rays? Why do iron fillings form circles around current? How did Marie Curie get poisoned? Can iron transform into gold or vice versa? These are some of the questions that physicists were grappling with in the 18th and 19th century. Let's find out how answers to these questions reveal the structure of atom. In our last video, we discussed the evolution of atoms across centuries. We started around 600 BC with Indian philosophies of Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist religions, which differed widely in what forms the fundamental unit. Is it matter or human experience itself? Around 500 BC, the Greek philosopher Democritus coined the term atomos. He proposed hook-based mechanism for atom aggregation. Plato discarded his idea and proposed that numbers and shapes are the building blocks of universe. To summarize, while all these philosophies agreed on fundamental indivisible particles, the difference was in the type of atoms and the question of role of divinity. Further, there were no experimentations to validate these hypotheses or understand how atoms combined. Understanding of atoms remained unchanged till 1700s. In 1803, English chemist John Dalton, while studying absorption of gases in liquids and their vapor pressures, observed that extent of absorption depends on the nature of gas and its reactivity with water. He theorized that each gas must have different ultimate particles which will react or not react with water. He called these particles atoms. Atoms of different elements have different mass. He also observed that atoms can rearrange themselves in chemical reaction to form different substances. His claim that atoms can neither be created nor destroyed led to law of conservation of mass and energy. However, if one element has one type of property, why are charcoal, graphite and diamond, all formed by carbon, so different? Phenomena in science are generally interdependent and a problem or unexplained observation in one area of science leads to new theories and experiments in some other area. Hence, it is important to understand the developments in electricity and magnetism around 1700s, which later helped the discovery of atomic models. In the late 1700s, an understanding of electric phenomena was pioneered by Benjamin Franklin, Charles Augustin de Coulomb, and others. Poisson, Gauss, and others developed electrostatics and magnostatics. In 1820, Hans Oersted found that electric currents produce magnetic fields. In 1831, Michael Faraday discovered electromagnetism. He observed that changing magnetic field produces electric current. Faraday discarded the medium and ether theories to carry electricity and magnetic forces and introduced the concept of fields to physics. Faraday further believed that electricity and magnetism may be related to light. In 1845, he was able to prove this. He noticed that plane of polarization of light rotated when passing through material to which strong magnetic field was applied. James Maxwell took this further to propose an electromagnetic field in which a changing electric field continually gives rise to a changing magnetic field. Maxwell calculated the speed of an electromagnetic wave and found that the speed of electromagnetic wave was almost identical to the speed of light. Hence, light and electromagnetism were put together. Maxwell's equations predicted an infinite range of frequencies of electromagnetic waves all traveling at the speed of light. So, this proved that light is an electromagnetic wave. However, what carried the electric currents was a mystery. In the whole of 19th century, experiments were conducted by applying voltage on glass tubes, later refined to be cathode ray tubes. It was realized that as the tube was evacuated and voltage applied between the two ends of the tube, there appeared to be certain glow inside the tube. As technology improved to create vacuum inside the tube and the pressure was reduced to around 10 raised to power minus 6 atmosphere, the tube became dark and there was no glow except at the inode end of glass tube. Also they observed that objects in front of cathode cast a sharp shadow at the glowing tube wall. This led them to believe 
that there is something travelling in straight line between the terminals which is itself invisible. These rays were hence called cathode rays as they appeared to originate at cathode and travel towards a node. There were two theories around what these rays constitute of. One theory believed they were particles of radiant matter that is electrically charged atoms and the other believed they were ether waves some new form of electromagnetic radiation and were separate from what carried the electric current through the tube. In 1897, J.J. Thomson studied cathode rays and observed that this beam deflected towards any positive charge or magnet. He estimated the mass of these rays to be thousand times lighter than hydrogen atom. Hence, it refuted the first theory and he concluded that atom is divisible. He further noticed that the mass remained same irrespective of the type of atom they came from. He proposed that atoms have negatively charged corpuscles which were later termed as electrons. The phenomenon happens like this. The voltage ionizes the gas in the tube. The positively charged ions hit the negatively charged cathode which releases electrons. The electrons are repelled by cathode and move towards anode. Sometimes the electrons are so high in energy that they first hit the glass. The atoms in fluorescent material on glass gets excited and when they return to their normal energy, they release light in the form of X-rays. J.J. Thomson hypothesized that atom is a sphere of positive matter within which electrostatic forces determine the positioning of electrons. To explain the overall neutral charge of the atom, he proposed that the electrons were distributed in a uniform sea of positive charge. This was called the plum pudding model. However, this model couldn't explain how negative and positive charge embedded together could form a stable atom. The glow from X-rays in cathode ray tubes led Henry Backerel and Marie Curie in 1896 to examine phosphorescent materials. In the process, they discovered radioactivity. Rutherford and his student Soddy realized that radioactive decay processes transformed one element to another and also created new rays. Some of the rays could be stopped by a sheet of paper while some passed through the paper but could be stopped by aluminium sheet. Rutherford classified them as alpha and beta particles. We now know that alpha particles are helium-4 nucleus and beta particles are fast-moving electrons. In 1911, Rutherford bombarded these alpha particles onto a thin gold foil. He observed that most alpha particles passed straight through the foil. Few were deflected by some angles and one in 20,000 particles rebounded. He concluded that most of the atom is void and a positively charged center and negatively charged electrons surrounding the nucleus. However, Rutherford's model didn't stay for long. Based on the above history, can you guess why? From works of Faraday and Maxwell, we know that a moving charge produces electromagnetic field. Hence, electrons revolve around nucleus, should produce electromagnetic energy and emit light. They should eventually lose their energy and collapse into the nucleus. As per the calculations, this will happen within 10 raised to power minus 11 seconds. However, we don't see the world around us collapsing. Further, Rutherford's atomic model couldn't explain how unique spectral lines are formed for different atoms. Isaac Newton first applied the word spectrum to describe the rainbow of colors that combine to form white light. In 1800s, the spectrometer was built. Gustav Kirchhoff studied light emitted from incandescent objects under spectrometer. He noticed that a hot gas under low pressure emits bright lights. Between 1826 to 1849, John Herschel demonstrated that each gas gives unique spectrum which has bands of bright lights and darkness. However, as per Rutherford's model, energy should continuously decrease as electron moves towards nucleus and atoms should emit a continuous spectrum. Why were the spectral lines discrete? To summarize, in 1700s, discoveries in electrostatics and magnetostatics by Gauss, Poisson, Faraday and Maxwell led to the understanding that electric and magnetic fields are related to each other and to light. To understand what constituted electricity, physicists experimented with cathode rays. Thomson discovered electrons and gave plum pudding model in 1897. However, this model couldn't explain the stability of atom with positive and negative charges so close together. 
Cathode rays also led to findings in X-rays and field of radioactivity and nuclear physics. Furthermore, alpha particles from radioactive decay led Rutherford to discover the nucleus and empty space in atom. However, Rutherford's atom couldn't explain the emission spectrum and stability of atom. In the next video, we will understand how classical physics was failing to explain multiple phenomena and how the road to quantum physics evolved our understanding of the structure of atoms. Which physicist in your opinion contributed the most to discovery of subatomic particles? Please comment below. Do let us know the topics on which you would like us to make more videos. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel JEST.